Bonjour, I'm Ronald W. Kenyon, author, educator, lecturer, and film historian. I've written 25 books, including compilations of essays about France, Florida, and the Middle East. I've also authored 10 volumes of photography. I was awarded two Hopwood Creative Writing Awards, and I've had a one-act play titled Manson produced. For over 50 years, I lived and worked in France, Washington, D.C., and the Middle East. While in France and researching a forgotten figure of the 18th century, Francois Racine de Montville, I discovered one of the most extraordinary figures of the 18th century, Jean-Pierre Blanchard. One thing led to another, and I realized that Blanchard's life was so extraordinary that it could be the subject of a film. This is a period piece set in 18th century France, England, and America about Jean-Pierre Blanchard, who rose from poverty and overcame ridicule in France to achieve fame and recognition in both Europe and America. The story incorporates a number of themes Boy genius, poor boy makes good, humiliation and ridicule, bravery, success, adulation, true love, feminism, and a spectacular death that was not in vain, and an optimistic ending. The action takes place between 1765 and 1809 in various locations in France, England, and the United States. After demonstrating his genius as a boy by inventing a sophisticated rat trap and a pedal-operated velocipede, Blanchard constructs a human-powered flying machine, an ornithopter, which he attempts to fly. He fails and becomes the butt of jokes and is ridiculed by the Parisian crowds. Undaunted and inspired by the balloon flights of others, in 1784 Blanchard becomes one of the first people to fly in a hydrogen-filled balloon, moving the balloon forward by means of oars and a propeller. In 1785, accompanied by his American co-pilot and benefactor, Dr. John Jeffries, he becomes the first to cross the channel from England to France by air. This was a harrowing flight in which the duo barely escapes death. After the flight, Blanchard and Jeffries are received by King Louis XVI and Queen Mary Antoinette at Versailles. For the next few years and before crowds of thousands, Blanchard tours throughout Europe, making 44 flights. In 1793, the reign of terror begins in France. With his teenage son, Blanchard takes refuge in America. On January 9th, 1793, in Philadelphia, Blanchard becomes the first person to fly in America. The flight was witnessed by thousands, including President George Washington and future presidents John Adams Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and James Monroe. Having success in Philadelphia, Blanchard moves to New York. While planning another flight, his balloon house is destroyed by a windstorm, killing his son. After this tragedy, Blanchard returns to Europe. In 1798, he falls in love and marries 18-year-old Sophie Armand he continues flying, mostly in France, and in 1804, he decides to teach Sophie how to fly. In 1809, during his 60th flight, near The Hague in Holland, Blanchard has a heart attack and crashes. First aid is administered by Louis Bonaparte, King of Holland. Jean-Pierre Blanchard returns to Paris, 
and dies on March 7, 1809. The film ends optimistically with Blanchard's widow, Sophie, preparing to take off on a solo flight. She will become famous as the world's first professional woman pilot. Thank you.